Hey all, Dustin Schaefer here, The Keto Pro. We're gonna talk about the ketogenic diet, kind of who can use it, what you can use it for, is it the right diet for you, and what does it overall look like? So just to kind of be clear, the ketogenic diet is not new. It's been around for over 100 years, and, and the reality is humans have been in ketosis the majority of our, our, our human existence uh, because food wasn't very plentiful, so anytime you run out of food, you go into ketosis. Uh, anytime that you don't have enough carbs and sugars, your body taps into your fat stores. It's why it's such a great fat burning uh, dietary plan to be a part of. Um, and the diet was actually really kind of invented uh, about 100 years ago for children, uh, to be honest. And it's been studied now uh, extensively over the last 100 years. Um, so nothing about it is new. Uh, it's actually a very effective diet. The challenge is, is that can you do it? Can you sustain it and, and do it long enough? And I always tell people, you know, I've been coaching this for 20 years, it takes about a, a six months to a year to, to, to really get good at the diet. You can get into ketosis before that. Now, maybe not therapeutic ketosis and that's, that matters, but um, it, it takes about six months because anytime you make a lifestyle change, you're going to have ups and downs and you're going to have bumps in the road. It doesn't mean that the diet is or isn't good. It just means that you got to figure out how your body can sustain it. It's the same thing if somebody kind of become a vegan, right? It, it's, it, you feel better at first and then you kind of have to figure it all out to make it long-term sustainable. And yes, I do have vegans that are low carb and that get in ketosis, but they all have to use our drink uh, if they want to sustain it. Um, they can't do it with a diet alone, at least successfully. Um, so who can do it? Really anybody. They, like I said, the, the, medically, they've been using the ketogenic diet for children, um, little children. And, um, and then, of course, all the way up to people in their you know, 80s, 90s, even 100 can still do the ketogenic diet, M busy moms and dads. So it's really a, a very well studied. Now, there is a few variations of the ketogenic diet, meaning that there's extreme cases where it's very, very high fat. It's like 85% fat because the, the ketogenic diet is a high fat diet. Um, now, keep in mind, you do have more calories per, per fat gram. So, um, uh, so anyways, it's, it's, it's just something to, to be aware of, but it's a high fat diet. The majority of people can actually get into a pretty good state of ketosis without being such a high fat where they, maybe it's a, it's a high fat diet with a moderate protein and low carb. Um, but anytime the carbs get too high and too high is going to be different for everybody. Your body will stop producing ketones efficiently and therefore your body's not going to be in ketosis and you won't get the major benefits. Um, that same thing can happen if you eat too much protein. So what I tell people getting started, we would do is we focus on low carb first. Um, so get the carbs down. Because what happens is if you eat your, start eating more fat and you don't direct your carbs fat enough or far enough down, what ends up happening is you end up getting fat and you don't want that. So it's really about becoming carb conscious and start bringing your carbs down. And then from there, we start to moderate our protein. Protein doesn't change a lot. So anywhere from, for women, it could be anywhere from 70 to 100 grams of protein. Some women, maybe 120 grams of protein a day. For, for men, it could be anywhere from 100 to 200 grams of protein a day. That will change on your activity levels and your fitness levels if you're into fitness. Um, but it's really important that we maintain uh, protein um, to maintain muscle mass. If that gets too low, um, you may get deeper in ketosis, but also you might actually, it might have some long-term effects uh, that you don't want. So that's where the, 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 the fine tuning of the diet takes time. It takes time to figure that out. Now, um, what kind of fats do we eat? Uh, we eat my, this is, these are the, the most optimal fats. Number one, saturated fat from animal meat. I know some of you are like, my heart, cholesterol, go watch The Big Fat Lie. Uh, it's a very, very big mistake that we've made around saturated fat. Um, number two, uh, coconut oil. Number three, avocado um, or avocado oil. And then number four, olive oil. Those are kind of the high standard. Anything other than that, I'm, I'm very cautious of. And I also wanted to let you know is that you start looking at the keto diet out there in the world. People are, you know, it's like they're just eating bacon and all this other processed meats and stuff. That's not the real diet. Those things can be utilized, but it should be strategic. It's a small percentage. It should be high quality proteins, fish, chicken, beef, elk, rabbit, squirrel, high quality proteins, and then high quality low carb vegetables. And you need about two cups, could be variable depending on the person, two cups of high quality vegetables a day. We want to get the... Some of you uh, carnivores out there, that's cool. You can do a carnivore diet. It's I don't think that's a sustained long-term diet anyway. Um, vegetables have, with our gut flora, we need the extra fiber in there to help improve gut bacteria. So it's really important to get those vegetables up. Um, and there's a variety of things. I'll have some lists of vegetables out there, some keto-friendly vegetables out there. So it's basically protein and vegetables is what you're eating uh, majority of the time. And then you're, what you're doing is allowing yourself to eat high-quality fats but you don't necessarily need to be pounding tons of fat at first. What I want you to do is to start to introduce it. 
Um, the reason why is some people don't break fat down very well because of their past. So we want it to be a progress or a process. Um, and then I tell people, you got to commit to six months to a year. You're going to have good days and bad days. And then the last tip about uh, the ketogenic diet is it's not the most sustainable long-term diet. It's hard to come off a of keto, like go have a, you know, go to Italy and have a pizza pizza and then come back onto the diet. That's why majority of people quit the diet. They don't sustain it unless it's medically necessary. And so what I found is that using tools is a really good, uh, important thing to help people maximize their long-term goals. And so I've now switched my lifestyle from a ketogenic lifestyle to a carb conscious lifestyle. And then I, I obviously drink ketones as a way to keep my ketone levels up. So I get the best of both worlds. So I get to have some fun, enjoy life at the same time, stay in ketosis so I can get the major benefits, cognitive benefits, energy benefits, and focus benefits. But you got to choose your own path. If you want to do the diet for a while and then come drink ketones, you can do that. Or if you want to just start off with drinking ketones and then implement a diet, maybe it is keto sometimes, maybe it's a little modification of it. And then we can kind of massage your diet and lifestyle along the way. And that's why I have the programs I have because ultimately I want you to have the most success. So ketogenic diet's awesome. It's real. It's not a fad. This is the most scientifically evident diet I've ever seen. And the research is extraordinary. If you can maintain a therapeutic level of ketones in your system, one to 3.5 millimolar, uh, you don't have to measure that, but that's kind of the optimal levels to sustain to get the long-term health benefits. And I have world-class athletes. I have everyday moms and dads. I have extreme cases that uh, we use this for.